Welcome to WSSD's Virtual Wastewater Treatment Tour. We are the Wastewater Authority and accept dirty water from homes, businesses, and industries in a 500 square mile area. WSSD was formed in the early 1970s as a result of the Clean Water Act. Our mission is to clean 40 million gallons of wastewater each day. Before WSSD, these wastes went directly into waterways. Now, with the help of naturally occurring bacteria, WSSD mimics the action of a river to protect public health and sustain a fishable, swimmable St. Louis River. Well, welcome to the lab at WLSSD. Uh, here in the lab we have three main jobs. One is that we monitor our plant. So we have a living process. We have lots of microbes and bugs and bacteria that are working hard to clean up our wastewater. So every so often, the folks down here in the lab who are working six days a week, they check in with those bugs, they take a look at them, make sure everybody's happy and healthy and working efficiently for us. Another job here in the lab is to monitor our customers. So we have 17 communities that are customer, our customers along with four industrial customers. Those folks are sending us wastewater every day. We take a look at it and we monitor the flow. So how much water are they sending us? And we also look at how dirty it is. So to do that, we measure BOD, which is biological oxygen demand, and the total suspended solids. So it's how chunky it is, and then we measure how hard our bugs have to work to clean it up. Just like you and I, the bugs use oxygen when they're trying to gobble stuff up and working hard. So we measure how much oxygen they're using as they're cleaning up our wastewater. And that helps us to bill our customers. And one more job that we have is that we monitor our permit. Because we're a point source, we have some very specific requirements. At our plant, we are monitored for heavy metals, the amount of bacteria we have in our water, and several different outputs. These guys in the lab are working, again, six days a week to make sure that we are below those levels. Our effluent, or the cleaned up wastewater, is actually cleaner than what's already out in the St. Louis River. And that's what we work for every day to make sure that we're supporting the environment. We have two very different types of customers here at WLSSD. One, we have our residential customers. So that's folks like you and me, or businesses, movie theaters, places like that. They're sending pretty standard stuff down the drain. Um, toilets are flushing, showers, dishwashers, uh, laundry, that sort of stuff. We also have industrial customers, and those are the folks that they can have variable wastewater. It can be dirtier some days if they're cleaning out some big tanks or pipes, or it can be just regular, mostly water, you know, kind of coming through the pipes. So when we monitor those customers, we have a specific spot in a pipe that tells us exactly the type of water that they're sending us, and we can check those levels as needed. We have an industrial pretreatment here program here at WLSSD. So one of the things we do is work with our customers to make sure that they're not sending things down the drain in the first place so that we don't have to work harder to clean that stuff up. And those are things like mercury or other heavy metals, different chemicals, anything that they might be producing in their process, we work with them individually to make sure that they can stop that, that material before it goes down the pipe. This is the biofilter. While it may not look exciting, a lot is going on back here. At the surface, it looks like a field of wood chips, but underneath, several feet down, is a complex network of pipes. The pipes snake back and forth and there's little holes in them. Those holes are slowly releasing all the smelly air around the wastewater treatment plant. So throughout the plant, you'll notice large pipes like this. They all are collecting the smelly air in our wastewater treatment process and shipping it over here to the biofilter. As the air snakes up through in between these wood chips, they encounter all sorts of bacteria and decomposers, things that are working to break down the wood chips, but they also like to eat the smelly organic compounds out of the air. So as the air filters its way up through those wood chips, it's far less smelly at the top than it was at the bottom. There are a couple of reasons that's important. One of them is because we are trying to be good neighbors. As you look over at the hillside, you can see we've got I-35 right next to us, a residential neighborhood, and also the thriving Lincoln Park Craft District. So we wanna make sure that those neighbors are happy to be in the Lincoln Park area along with WLSSD. In the past, we used different methods. We tried to do some masking and add flavors like peppermint or bubble gum over the top of the smelly air. As you can imagine, it didn't work so well. We've actually had a lot of success with the biofilter method um, and use it in several locations throughout our wastewater treatment system.
we're here in the bar screen room. This is actually the highest point of the plant. The water is moved uphill by screw pumps that are just out of sight on the other side of the room. The screw pumps look like giant ice augers, if you've ever seen one of those. The water moves uphill with those augers and then lands here in the bar screen room. This is the very first time where the water starts to slow down a little bit, but it runs through these bar screens first. And the things that are pulled out in these bar screens, it's very simple, just like it sounds. It's a series of bars, they're pretty close together. And anything big that shouldn't be there, so that's anything other than number one, number two, or toilet paper, is gonna get screened out. That's material like any sorts of plastics or non-flushable wipes, uh, anything that's got any bits or wrappers, just in general things that shouldn't be there. They cling to the bars and then every so often you'll see these rakes. The rakes drop down to the very bottom of the bar screens and scrape everything off on their way up. That material is then shoveled off onto a conveyor belt behind us and collected and sent to the transfer station um, and the landfill. So your best bet is to not to send that stuff down the drain in the very beginning so that we don't have to scrape it off these bars and throw it away here at the wastewater treatment plant. The water is now flowing into the grit tanks. We've just left the bar screen room. All the garbage and bits has been filtered out. The next job is for the water to slow down. In the grit tanks, the water is now moving via gravity and it's slowing down to allow any bits of gravel, sand, or inorganic material to sink to the bottom of these tanks. Once at the bottom, there's rotating arms that are slowly moving around and working to collect that grit, sand, and gravel and send it off to the landfill. You'll also notice that there are two tanks. We have two or more of at least everything in the wastewater treatment plant. We need to be able to shut one side down if something breaks or we need to do maintenance and still keep our plant operational. You can imagine that if something broke at the wastewater treatment plant, we can't take a day off. So we always have to be able to provide service to the community and our industrial customers. We're standing on top of the reactor deck. While it looks like a very simple concrete rectangle, it's not. This is actually where the bulk of wastewater treatment happens. Underneath our feet, we have what we like to call a concrete river. So the water snakes back and forth through these concrete channels, and along the way, it's encouraged by these motors. You'll see several of them along the top of the reactor deck. They're operating big paddles that are churning up that water. The water comes into us fairly warm. It's coming from, remember, those industrial customers that send us pretty warm wastewater. It's full of waste, which we can also call food. The other thing that's being constantly bubbled in is pure oxygen. This is a unique characteristic of our wastewater treatment plant. Many wastewater treatment systems use regular air. We actually have an oxygen plant where we create pure oxygen. It goes right into this concrete river to help feed all those bugs and bacteria that are working to eat the waste out of the water. And you can imagine when they have all of that oxygen, all the food they could eat and that they're nice and warm, what do they do? They grow and divide so that they can truly efficiently eat the waste out of the water. Wastewater treatment takes us approximately eight to 10 hours. So it flows through this concrete river. When the wastewater is pretty much cleaned up, it heads over into the next step, which is our clarifiers, the big domes that you see behind me. The bacteria that are here working for us at the wastewater treatment plant, we don't add them. They're actually donated by people like you. They're in the pipes, they're in the sewer system already. And it makes sense because they're already there. Obviously they like to eat the stuff that's in there. Once all those bacteria have grown and divided inside the reactor deck, we don't just get rid of them. They're working hard for us and we want them to keep working. So we actually send most of them right back into the wastewater treatment process and they're being mixed up by these paddles as well, right along with that pure oxygen. Our wastewater has just left the reactor deck and the water portion is pretty much cleaned up and ready to go back out in the river. However, it's still mixed in with our solids. Now the solids aren't what you're thinking at this point. It's actually all the waste has been cleaned up, but we have a lot of bacteria and dead bacteria bodies. So the wastewater heads into our clarifiers. What you see here is a rounded dome, but underneath is a cone shape. This is where the water goes and the solids all sink to the bottom and settle out. Now we can separate those two layers. The cleaned up wastewater is drawn off the top. 
and the solids settle down to the bottom. The cleaned up wastewater has a couple more polishing steps and then it heads back out into the river. The solids on the other hand, about a third of those are drawn off and sent for further, further processing to make our fertilizer product, but two thirds are sent back to the reactor deck to continue cleaning up wastewater for us. Our cleaned up wastewater has just left the clarifiers and travels through a tunnel where we put a little bit of bleach in. This is our disinfecting agent. And at this point, we no longer need those bacteria to be working hard for us. So it's time to reduce the amount of bacteria in our wastewater or our cleaned up effluent. And then the water flows into our multimedia filter tanks. It's not a technology thing at this point. It's very simple. We use a series of coal, sand, and gravel that are in the bottom of these filter beds. The water filters through and it acts a bit like a coffee filter. So any little bits that may be left in there are filtered out and also the water is brightened up in color a little bit. Let's review the wastewater treatment process. We've got some up close samples of wastewater that we're gonna take a look at. Now, this is what we call our influent or the water that comes into the wastewater treatment plant. Many people would take a look at this and think, huh, I expected that to be a little murkier, a little darker in color, but if you think about just the water that leaves your house, for as many times as we're flushing toilets, how often are we doing things like laundry and dishes and showers and baths? That's a lot more water and it's probably pretty clear. So maybe it makes a little bit more sense that our water um, isn't quite as dark. Also, about half of our water comes to us from industries and the industrial water looks different every day. Sometimes a little darker, sometimes a little more clear. This is what the influent looks like at WLSSD. This is a sample of what we call mixed liquor suspended solids. This is the water that's in the reactor deck and it's almost cleaned up and ready to go back out into the river. But this looks a little darker, doesn't it? Well, we mentioned that bacteria are the real workers at WLSSD and they're cleaning up all the wastewater for us. In the reactor deck, we have far more bacteria than we do of the water coming into the plant. Same bacteria are present in the influent, but because they have that pure oxygen, they have all of that food, and we're mixing and churning that water up for them, those bacteria grow and divide, and they make the water much, look much darker and murkier than it did when it first came here. After the water leaves the reactor deck, it heads into the clarifiers, the tanks under those big silver domes. At this point, the solids settle down to the bottom. So you can see this dark layer of solids here and our cleaned up wastewater at the top. The cleaned up wastewater is drawn off and it heads here to our multimedia filter room. And the solids, about two thirds, head right back into the wastewater treatment plant to keep working to clean up wastewater for us. One third heads over to be processed for our biosolids fertilizer product. When the multimedia filters get clogged, we have to go through a process called backwashing. So water starts to flow backwards through the filters to unclog all those little bits that are in there. And when the plant was first built back in the 1970s, a person had to come here to a control panel like this and flip a switch to indicate that that backwashing process should start. Today, our plant can be run from a control room by as few as two people, and they can monitor the levels of our tanks to make sure nothing's overflowing, and our filters to see if they need to be backwashed. And with a flip of a switch, they can indicate that it's time for a filter to backwash. We made it. This is the last stop for cleaned wastewater along the wastewater treatment process. We're at our contact tanks. The water here is flowing through a concrete river, much like the reactor deck. It goes back and forth between these concrete baffles. A couple of things are happening here. One is that we're bubbling through regular air, not pure oxygen like we used earlier in the process, but regular air. The reason that happens is because all of the little bacteria and microorganisms that we put to work to clean up our wastewater have been gobbling up oxygen. And when they gobble up oxygen, they breathe out carbon dioxide, just like you and I. So this water is essentially dead water. It's filled with carbon dioxide. And if we put that back out into the river, the fish and the plants out there in the river would not be happy. So we bubble through that regular air to displace carbon dioxide. From there, the other thing that you'll see happening here is a little bit of foam. Foaming is very natural at this point in the process. As you remember, we get a lot of our water, about half from industries, 
And in that water, we have little bits of wood fibers and fatty acids that create a natural foam in our wastewater, much like you would see if you went to Gooseberry Falls or another waterfall um, on the St. Louis River or rivers in our area. Now it's time to talk about the solids. We're here in front of the digesters. This is a cloverleaf shaped building. So on this side, you can see two 1 million gallon tanks. There's also two more on the other side. This is where we treat the solids and the material stays here for about 30 days. It takes a little bit longer and we use a temperature phase anaerobic digestion process. Unlike the reactor deck where we were bubbling in pure oxygen, here we take the oxygen away in an effort to treat the solids and reduce the number of bacteria that we have in, in that material. We're doing that because we land apply 100% of our biosolids fertilizer product. Another thing that happens here is again, because we've taken the, the oxygen away, we now have an anaerobic process that gives off instead of carbon dioxide, like we saw um, with the water, it gives off methane. We harvest that methane, we collect it, we clean it up and we use it as fuel in our boilers. I'm standing here in front of our biosolids fertilizer. From the digesters, where the material is in more of a liquid form, it then goes to our centrifuges. This is where we dewater the material. So it's already processed, but we need to get it into a form that's easier to ship and land apply on area farm fields. The centrifuges work to spin the material so the solids collect in the center, the water spins off and heads back to the beginning of the wastewater treatment process. The solids then are dropped down onto a conveyor belt and they head over here to the storage facility. Our staff at WLSSD takes this material, we load it up into semi trucks and it is land applied to area farm fields. We have several criteria that we use in order to select which farmers are going to get our material. First of all, it's highly regulated by the EPA so we make sure that we are putting out a very high quality product. And we apply that to farm fields that they have soil testing. We require that to make sure that the farm field is suitable for the material that we're going to provide. We also make sure that the farmer is growing crops for non-human consumption. So they can grow things like corn or hay that's going to feed animals. We, we check for setback areas. So we don't want any public contact areas too close to where our fertilizer is going to be land applied. And we also determine where the groundwater wells are on the farm fields. One other location that we land apply our biosolids fertilizer is in mine tailings basins. So we do this year round. We're always looking for new opportunities to land apply, apply this material. Our biosolids are a source of nitrogen, phosphorus, and organic matter. The advantage to using our product is that it's a slow release material versus chemical fertilizers Number one, they're more expensive. And number two, it's a fast release. So those nitrogen and phosphorus elements go straight into the soil quickly and don't have the long lasting benefit that biosolids fertilizers do. Thanks for joining us on our virtual tour. We hope you enjoyed learning more about wastewater treatment and our mission to protect public health and the environment. Visit us at WLSSD.com to find out more about our facilities and community programs.